Welcome in, Monday edition, Blue Sky Live here with you, Chase Parm, Neil McCready, Clark Ford Studio, a lot of basketball news going on on a Friday just around lunch. Chris Beard turned down the Razorbacks to remain as the Ole Miss head coach. We'll discuss that. Got a good bit of that, obviously, on the site at rebelgrove.com. And then uh, late yesterday evening into last night, John Calipari, the Kentucky coach, now headed to Fayetteville to be the coach of the Arkansas Razorbacks. We'll break all that down. Got Final Four news, got an eclipse today, got all kind of stuff going on here with you, including uh, the Ole Miss baseball team that uh, fell three times to Arkansas. Speaking of Fayetteville, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, they oh, fall to, yes. Yeah, don't forget Morgan Wallen last night. I got that too. No, Let the liquor I, talk. I got, got, got a full board here, okay? Might not even get a, might not even get to some baseball. Here. Probably yeah. won't, actually. I'll hit a little bit, but probably tomorrow's show for a lot of baseball, but the Rebels fall. There They get Murray State if the weather holds tomorrow night, rain all week long, heading into uh, Friday, and then the Mississippi State Bulldogs in town for uh, Grove Bowl weekend this weekend for fighting Ole dogs Miss and State. Yeah, we can talk about that, too. Got yeah. a lot of stuff going on here with you today <laughs> with, uh, with, uh, with that. Again, uh, brought to you every day by the Blue Skies throughout Mississippi. Don't you slide up into my plate, I-55. bitch. <laughs> you slide North into my Mississippi plate, and I'm going to well. take your ass down. I'm going to tell you that. Don't slide into my plate. Had a lot going on there. There's a lot. There. I flipped it in about halfway through and went, holy hell. Yeah. Anyway, Blue Skies, <laughs> Oxford Exxon, lunch specials, 569, couple sides of bread, any size fountain drink you would uh, you would like. You can uh, head to the epicenter there in Macomb, new uh, store, Subway attached to that. A lot, of, uh, a lot of restaurants also attached to these Blue Skies that are out in Mississippi. So wherever you are, there's one close to you inside the state. And again, come to you from the Clark Ford Studio. We are Clark Ford is in Amory, Mississippi, 662-257-1900 is the number. Call it. Ask for Corey Clark. Tell Corey what Ford product you're looking for. He'll send you a quote within 15 minutes in business hours. It's right to the bottom line. No hassle, no haggle. You get your quote. The rest is up to you. You can shop that quote around. You can do what I've done, what I recommend that you do, and that's hop into a Clark Ford today, 662-257-1900. Guest join on the Campbell Clinic hotline. Campbell Clinics in Oxford, now 2608 South Lamar Boulevard, Suite 102, just across the street from the cottages at Hooper Hollow. The Campbell Clinic provides full-service orthopedic care, everything from sports medicine to foot and ankle surgery to spine and total joint care, pediatric orthopedics, physical therapy, and more. To book an appointment, go to CampbellClinicOxford.com or call 901-759-3111. Walk-ins always welcome. At the Campbell Clinic, Monday through Friday, 7.30 a.m. until 4 p.m. Yeah, sometime on Friday when Chris Beard took the, uh, or sorry, stayed at Ole Miss, not taking the Arkansas job. I, I didn't think John Calipari was where we're headed. So we'll look we'll, we'll there in a minute. First, as uh, as Neil mentioned, yes, uh, Morgan Wallen apparently you know, on Broadway in Nashville last night. He threw a chair off uh, the rooftop bar of Eric Church's new, uh, new new establishment. Again, there on Broadway, mm-hmm. I believe uh, multiple felonies were associated with uh, with that per the TV stations in Nashville that I saw this morning. We basically threw them at the police. That's that as plays a role. a role. I mean, as a rule, he is twelve days away from his makeup concert in Oxford. Is uh, allegedly voice uh, voice issues, <laughs> as I use quotes, uh, yeah. prevented that last uh, last year. So uh, a dozen days away, I don't know. Look, I mean, everybody talks about, hey, country stars aren't like what they used to be. A lot of George Jones in this one last night as, uh, again, he throws the uh, <laughs> the chair off there uh, in, uh, in in Nashville. Again, I'm not making light of what obviously is, 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 is an alcohol situation, um, but I have no clue where that is headed as far as his upcoming schedule. Um, can't say I'm sourced on that whatsoever, but we'll see where that goes this morning. Again, 8-15 for Morgan Wallen there. He needed some you proof last night. He did. He did. Sure. He did. His lyrics play into this well, don't they? You, you can go all day. Go, 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 go. Wait, it's not wasted on yeah, you. Yeah, yeah, no, yeah. Sir. <laughs> uh, so. We don't even need whiskey glasses yeah, yeah, yeah. or eclipse glasses. It's just, it but just keeps coming. I was curious because I know people doing a little bit of everything with the uh, the eclipse today, a total solar eclipse where yeah. the sun, the moon, and the earth all get in alignment. Um, the next one is not for 20 years. The next one's in 2044, yeah. I believe, if I, uh, if I have that correct. Um, saw a guy on Saturday that was in Oxford from Gainesville, Florida, um, who was just driving to the eclipse. He was going to sleep in his car wherever, uh, wherever he ended up, trying yeah. to figure out somewhere – Somewhere between Jonesboro and Cape Girardeau for uh for for for, for that. 
Um, a lot of people traveling, people booked hotels way in advance mm-hmm. to, to, to be aware of this. Um, I saw that the economic impact this morning of this eclipse, something that obviously you're just getting the benefit of, six billion dollars <laughs> really in tourism type revenue. Mother, that is more than the entire Taylor Swift Eras tour. Mother Nature just giving a gift. Yeah. Um Niagara Falls is gonna get a million visitors for this. Oh, is it today? It's right on the path. It's huh? it's in the totality line. Okay. Um a million visitors. They only get fourteen million all year. Indianapolis getting 500,000. Obviously, the state of Texas is way in the line. And I I will say that I I do think people like even here, if you're into this kind of thing and you care, it's like 94.4% totality for Oxford, I I think. So, I mean, you're going to get a show if you just walk outside now, assuming our weather and the sun and the clouds. And that's the bigger problem because I think you might need to move a little bit from a – from a from from a cloud cover weather standpoint, but it's not like it's zero or nothing. I think sometimes that gets confused a little bit. So there is a totality that is very. Uh, it's not totality, but it is a lot here in the uh, in the Oxford area. I know they were the the the, the teachers were going to let the kids go outside with glasses at Bramlett today, and um, they were trying to make sure that the kids were aware. Hey, don't take your glasses off. Telling the parents, hey, let's be very 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 aware of uh of, of this but anyway yeah that is going on today yeah, I just pulled i just pulled up the totality line we're we're not far from it that's what i'm saying it's 95 percent almost totality where we are like where caroline is in fable looks like it's somewhere between 95 and 100 like but not quite there mm-hmm. like little rock is right in the path if i'm reading it correctly and then up through the boot hill of missouri southern illinois Indiana, pretty much all of Indiana. Yeah. There you go. So I asked this morning, um, would you travel to see the solar solar eclipse? Again, a few minutes worth of what is a, a cool nature thing. 11.8% said yes. 64% said they'll go outside wherever they are, but that was the most uh, impact. And then 24% said not even for Bonnie Tyler as uh, the time goes on. So it's a really good song. It is a really good song. Yes. It is. It is. It. She has become synonymous with that song over the last three or four decades, or whenever at uh, four decades, I guess, at this uh, at this juncture. Well, I, I got to think about that. A ton of people going into Arkansas today to see this thing from Mississippi. Yeah. Can you imagine what I forty is going to be like coming back? No, because it's that bad anyway. And now we're going to put all these people in like Little Rock and Jonesboro and wherever up through Missouri. And then it's going to end all at the same time, and they're all going to turn around and drive back on that interstate that is hell at any point anyway. You're very well versed at this point. Turn around. Just, that's what we're going to turn around. There you go. You, you didn't know you were going to be so good at song lyrics today. Usually that's not your thing, and yet today just roll it off the tongue. Uh, every now and then I get a little bit lonely. I think that you're never coming around. I can just turn my mic off at this point. Just, you know. Every now and then I get a little bit tired listening to the sound of my tears. What year was Total Eclipse of the Heart? <laughs> About my time. Um, was it? Yeah, probably. So you heard this back in the day? <laughs> oh, yeah. Eight tracks? Oh, yeah, probably eight so. Eight tracks? Probably so. I had a Blondie eight track once. Did you really? I did. What do you think your last eight track was? Like, when would that have ended? <laughs> probably Blondie. <laughs> People saying also Memphis on 55, major road construction, so be aware oh, as, you go, <laughs> as you go through that. And aware what that a nightmare. Place. Holy shit. Yeah, Rebel Road Trip in Dallas tonight, so there'll be there'll be plenty of people in the Dallas area for uh, for that one. Because uh, I guess, I mean, I came in on cassettes. I never, de- I mean, an 8-track was before me, yeah. so I, I would have had cassettes and then VHSs, mostly, obviously. mostly cassettes. We would tape the tape off the radio to get it onto the cassette and you would just hope that the dj would shut the f up tape off the radio yeah, to, to get, get the it cassette. on the so that cassette. was your version of a burn cd yeah. that we would have done yeah because we would have had napster and limewire and all those to get on there and usually usually taping from fm 102 and, and sometimes their djs would just keep talking and keep talking and keep just shut up let the music play so i could get this on the oh, tape. it screws it up yeah because now you're recording the dj i don't want to hear the dj i want to hear Pat Benatar or something. Yeah, because I can remember. I mean, and, and, and I guess the last vestige of like terrestrial radio 
for me was probably around high school still. You could do the we usually like for the pop station where I was, we would get ninety four one out of Tuscaloosa, I think is where it was. Mm-hmm. But you would get like the you know, the the top nine at nine or whatever. Oh, yeah. So yeah, you'd get like that, like right there at whatever time it was at night. Rick D's the weekly top forty. Well yeah, of course. There you, go. you could get a lot of cassette material there. <laughs> you could get whole albums done mm-hmm. at that. Oh my god. Yeah, I, I don't. Hardman says Chase never did that. I'm younger than you, and I remember doing that a time or two before LimeWire came out. I I do not remember recording with a cassette tape off the radio. Yeah, if that was done, I, I don't that was recall. Probably that. before your time. Because I mean, we had um, you were more CDs. Yeah, that's what I was trying. I think I've been saying DVD. CD was what I was meaning. Mm-hmm. I don't. I don't know when CDs came in, but yeah, my junior high high school was CDs, I mm-hmm. would think for sure. Yeah. Well, I know high school because we all had the books of CD holders that oh, you yeah. would Those stuff under your seat. Well, no, they were like yeah. they were like photo albums. Yeah. yeah like yeah. the photo albums things. And you just put them in your back seat or under the seat and they'd all be labeled with Summer Hits 2000 or like whatever the burn <laughs> CD was there as you were trying to get it, trying to get it all fixed uh-huh. up. Yeah, it was, it was it was something along those lines. So I, I'm going to get into the Arkansas thing in a minute. Um, so I'll hit a couple other news things first before we go into the second segment. Uh, Ole Miss did announce their Grove Bowl games for uh, for oh, yes. Saturday. Not just the Grove Bowl, but Grove Bowl games. There will be a a seven on seven competition, and then there will be various other skills competitions. So basically, field day on Vaughn Hemingway Stadium on Saturday for the Rebels. I think uh, if you hit the if you hit the uh, if you throw the ball just right and you hit the right spot, you'll put Lane Kiffin in the dunk tank. Oh, we're going to do the dunk tank? Yeah. I, okay. I applaud okay. this. Oh, no, I, no, no. I applaud it. It's perfect. If anything, I laugh that the graphic promoting it had shoulder pads in it because there will be no shoulder pads to be found on Saturday. I would not think. Um, here's my question. Next year, what percentage of teams will copy this? 20%. You think 20? Mm-hmm. So out of the sixty Power Five for the lack of sure, so twelve of do you think twelve teams do a Grove Bowl games type setup next spring at least? Okay, I, I compliment him. He 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 was maybe the one guy in all of college football who looked at this and went, "This is stupid. I'm not going to do it." It's been stupid. Now it's really We all stupid. do it because it's the way you've always done it and we're scared to change. Well, and, and now... If the NFL hadn't done it, would he be doing it? NFL hadn't done what? The same thing. Oh, I don't know. Maybe, maybe not. I mean... Not taken away. Just yeah. curious. I mean, you know, he looked at it and went, well, if they can do it. Which is a fair argument. It is. Um, And I think he looked at it and said, okay, two, what good... If, if we line up red versus blue and go get them, boys... What good comes from it on April the 13th? Feel free to walk me through the good. Because they don't play again until August the 31st. So that's five and a half months. Is that right? That's correct. Okay. You May, don't play June, for... June, July, August. Yeah, four and a half. Four, four and a half months. Yeah, four and a half. North Louisiana uh, math. Four and a half months. You don't play for four and a half months. Are you really telling me that you're going to get something super constructive out of that spring game? Now, you're going to water it down if you do play it because you don't want anybody to see what you're trying to do. Okay, so that's that. Sure. What if somebody gets hurt? ACL is not repairing in four and a half months. Now, you could also do that in a seven-on-seven game. You could. But But you're taking contact injuries out. I mean, you know, football is a contact game. I'm probably not going to have an offensive lineman rolled up and uh, tear up his leg in seven on seven since he won't be out there. And then the other part of it is the transfer portal opens a week from today. You hurt somebody's feelings on Saturday, and everybody's worried about this at that's Ole Miss, at Kansas, ding, ding, at ding, everybody. Ding. That's it. That's it, of course. Somebody doesn't get reps. Somebody else gets reps. If you do it, you have to boo a ones versus, what do you do, ones versus twos? Because you don't want to put anybody you, you on You have twos. to do a draft. The okay. only way to make it work is have two captains and do a draft and go, hey, they picked the teams. They All picked right. the teams. We didn't pick the teams. That's the way you would do it. But even then, Jackson and Pegues are captains, and they pick their squads. Okay. 
That's how you would do it. I bet you can get hurt feelings. Oh, well, sure. And this way, you just avoid it. I, I think these two things are probably true. Bobble Fish says teams with new coaches will have a spring game, probably. Yeah. And you probably need a little goodwill built up with your fan base, at least next year. Yeah, maybe so. I mean, Florida I'll, probably not rolling out there with Grove Bowl games this, this spring. But in a scenario where Ole Miss gets upset in the first half of the season by somebody, if anybody brings this up, I will eviscerate them in column form. I, I will I will light them on fire. It's the most idiotic thing. You you just nothing good comes from the games. Maybe some fan stuff, blah blah blah. The same fans that pour into a stadium in April will rip you apart in September if you lose. Mm -hmm. It's a scoreboard business. Don't do anything that hurts you on the scoreboard in the spring. I compliment him. I, I think it's brilliant on his part. It took a set. He's got a set. Did it. He's not worried about outside even, fault. He didn't care. No. Look, he, again, I give the guy tons of credit. I mean, I, I'm, I'm trying not to sit here and sound like a stand for the guy, but he stands up there and tells us the truth. We get very little coach speak. I mean, hardly any. And he said, he said it. We're not doing it. And he, he's going to get asked about it on Tuesday. He's going to talk about it again. What good comes from it? We he, do it. We do it because everyone else does it. Well, that's never a really good reason, right? If your kid comes in, you're like, why did you? Why did you get drunk at the party, Tommy? Well, everybody else did. Why did you fail the test, Tommy? Well, everybody else failed the test. Why did you have a spring game where you lost two linebackers to knee injuries? Well, everybody else had a spring game. I mean, look, it's dangerous enough in August and camp and stuff. We kind of have to start incorporating it. Why, why borrow the trouble? I'll get back to basketball here in a little bit as far as the actual Final Four, but that tip tonight is not until 8.20 Central. Ooh. You catching the end of that basketball game tonight? Mm, probably not. Also, it's on TBS, so factor yeah. that into any ratings thing. How the hell you play your title game on TBS is... 8.20. Not ideal. Yeah, 8.20. 9.20 Eastern. That's the game ending at 10.30. I don't know, dude. It better be compelling. Really compelling. Might even watch a, a, a UConn route for the greatness of it. If Purdue's up like 15, I'm out. Peace. They can have it. But I might follow... I might follow UConn at that point, I think is kind of where I'm sitting with that. It is Masters Week. Yes, that's true. That way. Yeah. The azaleas and the recorded birds. Hello, friends. It's a huge turn. It's an even bigger tournament now because it's one of the few times you get everybody on one course mm -hmm. because of the PGA and the live. You get to just have golf for once. For one week. Because it is killing interest otherwise. Yeah. I mean, oh my God. At the yeah. death of the sport. Yeah. Fast. Again, I forget to put my fantasy picks in almost every Thursday. I get like a little reminder email on Wednesday night going, hey, you hadn't. And I'm like, I forgot there was even a tournament. Lock in this week. My theory. You know what it is. Things change. It's true, John. You got to give people time to get back from the eclipse today. You got to get back for 820. You got plenty of time to travel back. Get on in. Have at it. You know, looking perplexed there. So while he's uh he's doing that, I'll tell you about Prime Shrimp. PrimeShrimp.com. A lot of different flavors available for you, including their soy ginger. It's their newest option. It's great with hibachi type dishes, proteins, vegetables, rices. And more there with uh, prom shrimp salads. You okay? Yeah. All right. <laughs> they deliver directly <laughs> to your door. If you're within 10 minutes, freezer to plate also. It's great for snacks, lunches, easy dinners. Kids are busy right now. Going to be even busier as the summer gets going. They got great recipes on their site at Prime Shrimp. We're going to give you a little discount. You get 25% off. You buy five pouches or more. Again, that is 25% off with code RG at PrimeShrimp.com. People making jokes this morning. Um. Let's see. Are you retiring soon? How long should you take Social Security? What accounts should you pull from first? Are you already retired? Should you consider Roth conversions? These are just some of the questions. They can only be answered with a personalized retirement income plan. Andrew Segoe with Segoe Wealth Management specializes in helping folks just like you 
come up with their retirement game plan, whether you meet at his office in Collierville or prefer uh, Zoom from anywhere. Schedule a free discovery meeting and see what they can do for you. It's rebelsretire.com. We're brought to you by Comer Heating and Air, Southern Air Conditioning and Heating, different names, same great products and services. If you live in Oxford, Tupelo, or the surrounding area, call Comer, 662-801-1777. If you live in Hernando, Memphis, or the surrounding area, call Southern, 662-429-4429. Coming up this weekend for uh, the Grove Bowl for the Mississippi State Series, stop by the College Corner in Oxford. It's right uh, off of Sisk Avenue in the Oxford Commons. More than 4,000 square feet of the best Rebel gear. Plenty of parking available. Their staff's going to have you in and out. Ready for uh, Swayze, for Vaught Hemingway, for The Grove in no time at all. Also two locations in the Jackson area, and you can check them out on the web at collegecornerstore.com. We're brought to you by Argent Wealth, formerly Pinnacle Wealth, Argent Wealth based in Ridgeland, Mississippi. Clients in more than 20 states. Argent provides detailed specialized investment management, financial planning, retirement planning for individuals and businesses, and much, much more at Argent. Investing is treated like a commodity. Decisions are made using objective information and research, not emotions. So regardless of your level of wealth, Argent will sit down with you, listen to your goals, study your expenses, and put forth a comprehensive, detailed financial and retirement plan built just for you. It's uh, Argent, myargentwealth.com. And we're brought to you by John Edwards, Regency Travel Incorporated in Memphis. John's part of Virtuoso. It's a worldwide network of travel partners that allows him to supply his clients with added values, unique benefits, simply not available to other travelers. If you are uh, wanting to plan a trip that uh, creates a lifetime of unique memories, get in touch with John, give him some parameters, give him a budget, let him give you some options, and uh, no, you don't have to live in or near Memphis to take advantage of his services. 901-494-3387 or Edwards at regencytravel.net. Yeah, uh, I, you know, mountain or central time zones are the best for sports. It's one of those two. It just depends on kind of your your viewing habits. Um, there's an argument for central. It's definitely not eastern with those late damn starts, at least not for me. Um, and there would be something kind of cool on the west coast of waking up and college football is at 9 a.m. Go ahead and start it then. Also, the late game's not crazy late. Like yeah. that, that, the fall, maybe. Wouldn't be bad. But I don't mind those couple hours to get some stuff kind of out of the way too, though, before it starts. Eleven, like, kind of right. You get you get a minute to yeah. wake up and get about your day. Yeah. And, I mean, you wouldn't mind it, but going to the going to the park at eight thirty in the morning would be a little strange. It's a little early. No, nine thirty. You all good? Sign me up. Well, you know that's the thing. Like in Hoover, I'd always love that because they'd be like, "Hey, you get the four games." And I'm like, "Oh God, you got that nine thirty game in the morning." I'm like, "That is fantastic." Oh, I loved it. 9.30 to 12.30, you're done riding by like 2.15. Yeah, three at the Day's latest. Day's gone. I'm like, oh, come on. Oh, you, got all, you got five. You got plenty of time to get to Bonefish. I mean, like, we're just rolling. <laughs> you got it's, five hours of sunshine left. Yeah. Get golf in if you wanted to. If you to. wanted to, you could go get a round in. Yeah. Get over to you'd Robert be, Trent Jones. You'd have to be efficient, but yeah. Yeah. Yeah, people b- would bitch about that. Oh, God, it's so early. We're already having to be here. As it's opposed like, to that late night. Yeah, thing. it's like Shoot. 2.30 in the morning. Going back to a hotel at 2.30 in the morning. You got to take a shower because you're gross. You're starving. They'll have donuts for you the next morning at the park. So oh, God. All the McDonald's biscuits you can eat. The soda with your biscuits at 9.30 in the morning. I will say the, the press register used to make me cover the whole tournament. Really? Yeah. No matter who played? No matter who played. Do you write about every game? Pretty much. That was a long couple of days. Oh, I... Kendall and them look so dead when they get out of there. And then knowing that two weeks later, they're doing that in Omaha for two more weeks. Yeah. It's like, and I know you're watching baseball. I get it. But it's, and at least there, it's a little different baseball. Sometimes the SEC tournament, you're covering truly meaningless games. Yeah. You know? yeah, yeah. So, all right. Uh, Friday, we worked it all morning, sometime around noon. Chris Beard turns down the Arkansas Razorbacks. Gets another elevated contract from uh, from Ole Miss. Yep. Remaining in Oxford to be the head coach going into his second season. And Neil wrote about it in Good Bitten and Thoughts. Um, I, I wrote kind of a final thought thing on it uh, as well on the message board on Friday or Saturday. It's all kind of running together. And, you know, this was the job. It was the one when Chris Beard was hired that said, this feels like it's whatever it's going to be. When Arkansas comes open, all bets are off. Um, as I wrote, you probably did too. 
Um, he was a finalist and probably the favorite for the Arkansas job when he was at Texas Tech when they hired Eric Musselman. Well, they were going, like, as you pointed out yeah. on Saturday morning, they were going to hire him, and he was going to take He it. won too much. But they got to the third weekend. And, yeah. Uh, Arkansas didn't want to wait. Urichek was a little scared. And the other thing in that moment that Urichek was scared of, and this is some emotion. Idea. Well, he was also scared. What if it, What if Texas opens up in a year? Yeah. Because that was his dream job. And the truth is, not to defend Urichek here, but in that case, he was probably right. Right. And so he hired Musselman, who got off to a hot start. Yeah. It was really good yeah, most was, of the and, time. You know, so one, carry on. No, you're good. So this was the one. And, you know, it, it's what people aren't necessarily focusing on, even though Neil and I both have, have written in. I'm not going to go through all the minutiae. Again, you can read that on the board. Um, That's not what this is for. But Ole Miss ended up more. He, he had signed a contract in March. They had already ended up more anyway. And then now here th this past week, they increased resources in a variety of ways, including in IL, and made more of a commitment in – Significantly the, more. Yeah, the part that... If, if what I hear is correct. The part that people aren't focusing on enough outside of you and I is... And I think it's just the, hey, turn down Arkansas, ha-ha, laugh at the Razorbacks, and I get that. It's fine, whatever. But it's up to Chris Beard now. Mm -hmm. The story here is, yes, you did enough to cr convince Chris Beard that Ole Miss was a better spot for him to be than Arkansas because he got to pick. Mm -hmm. He could do either one. And as you've seen, Arkansas wasn't shy on cash we'll no, get to that in a minute yeah they, they put listen the the chris beard portion of this yeah yeah yeah. unless everyone's wrong and my 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 i've i've, I've learned that there are certain people you just can't trust they're too mm -hmm. they're too homer they're too emotional but then there are other people that are not emotional about it and when they all kind of start saying the same thing it's right arkansas put together one hell of an aggressive lucrative NIL laden offer for Chris Beard. Well, you spoke about it. I think that's the word even there that they got a little emotional. Hey, we need to win this. Yes. Let's, we're going to come back again. We're going to up it. Yes. They put some, frankly, really odd stuff in the deal that they, they would take care of. It was an aggressive offer. There was real estate involved here. Mm -hmm. I mean, it went a lot of different ways mm -hmm. with this thing. And Keith and Ole Miss kept countering and kept counting like, and, and got it done. And again, credit, cool. You got your coach. Yeah. Better than a coaching search this week. Sure. And he's going to win. Like, he, he's being paid in every facet being paid and in a power conference. Top 10 money. At a place that now you go, hey, no, your your expectation is to make the NCAA tournament and be competitive in that next, in, in, in that route. Next year. Yeah. So, hey, here's your checkbook. Go get dudes. Like, yeah. that, the, the pressure actually has flipped here. This isn't last year where it was, wow, Chris Beard's your coach. This is, wow, what's he going to do? Now the pressure is actually on Chris Beard. 100%. Totally I mean, flipped. Totally flipped. I mean, Ole Miss got it done. There were some spots Friday morning when I, I wasn't sure it was going to get done. I mean, I don't know. I don't know that I ever would have gone. Thursday night is when I was going like 40 to 60% for like an hour and going. I, I, and because look, here's the deal. And it's nothing personal against him. I mean, I called Neil and I was really, really, really frustrated. Is I think it broke about 12 15, 12 30. Um, at eleven twenty, I had pretty good source saying that he was staying, and then at eleven twenty five, another source that I should have just gone with yeah. saying he was staying. Yeah, and I got really mad at myself because I was like, could have broken that for forty five minutes. Like I had it, like my normal person, and I was a little distracted, and there was more stuff to it. But I came down to if he's going. Could he still be going and these people not know it? Yeah. And that's just something that was sticking in my mind. And I went, okay, but if, if it's the other way, and at some point you either trust your people or you don't. But sure, that's kind of where my head was. And then when it went through, you went, you kind of took a step back and went, wow, Arkansas really tried. Mm -hmm. He said no. And it sort of sunk in. And you went, wow, now you better get to work. Like, it, that was the immediate thought 100%. that sort of clicked through my head once that happened. 100%. I mean, look. Keith Carter and Ole Miss made the same decision that Arkansas has obviously made, which is this basketball thing, we must win at it. We must be relevant in it. Because Ole Miss couldn't uh, that made the decision that we can't afford to let him go. And, I mean, I don't think two weeks ago 
probably some of the numbers that were the numbers are today were numbers that Ole Miss was like jacked up about. I mean, it's, that wasn't what Keith was envisioning whenever he put that deal together with a couple of weeks left in the season. Yes, this is because I, I tell people this all the time, and you do too. It's not monopoly money. It's it's real money, so you've got to pay it, and sometimes it means you have to take it from other places in your budget, and you've got to you 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 can only hit people up for money so many times before people push back or say, well, where where are my results? And so Ole Miss got it done, and then. Very clearly, now that we have seen what happened, Arkansas did the deal where you get rejected publicly and people do the, oh, God, look, look, look. I think this is one of those cases where maybe everyone involved kind of wins. I mean, Kentucky wins. They wanted John Calipari to leave without having to pay him $33 million. They don't million have dollars. to pay him $33 million. Now they've got to go get a coach, though, who's going to go Walk into that circus. Are they about to pay $18 million to get Nate Oates? Or are they about to hire Chris Scott Drew? My gut tells me Drew. Uh, I'm, I'm, it's too early. Okay. And then there's a couple other names that are out there that you can't just completely dismiss. This is maybe the one college job Billy Donovan re- would return for. He doesn't want to recruit. Mm, I don't know. Where's Kentucky's money? Is it? I, I, listen, this is the part. Can I, can, can, can I play devil's advocate real quick? Yeah, sure. Of course, I can. It's a podcast. It'll kill time. You're right. Everybody got what they wanted. Ole Miss keeps beard. They trust him with the program. Kentucky just needed the hell out. I mean, again, you look at Calipari's recent record. They haven't won an NCAA tournament game since 2019. I think that's right. If so, one. But and, and either way. Arkansas needed to unify a fan base and get the money behind NIL. And listen, unless you don't believe the people that are. No, I mean, even D1 this. Ticker, who is completely behind the administrations this morning, said at least $8 million in salary and at least $5 million in NIL. Yeah, and I've heard seven. That was this morning. Yeah, I've heard seven from someone who would know. I mean, I'd say a ton of money. He's going to bring, as of this moment, three of the five five stars he has committed to Kentucky are switching to Arkansas. I mean, it's a win for them, too. Yeah, Scott Drew down to even money. That's where I was going, though. Yeah. It's, look, it is. It's the right call. 100-year check, you got the dude that was going to com- combine all your bases and all that stuff more than anyone well, you, you else. Great hire, job. You couldn't hire Chris Jans. Yeah. This Eight. is where this is where everything can't be looked at in a in a you have to every individual place has nuance attached to it. If all, if, if Ole Miss lo- loses Chris Beard, right? Yeah. You have to replace Chris Beard. How do you do that? Can you get somebody who's as good as Chris Beard? I don't know. Will Wade Listen, I think the Will Wade thing, I know for a fact, I shouldn't say that. I feel pretty comfortable that the SEC is recommending people not hire Will Wade right now. He's getting the Hugh Freeze treatment for a year. For at least another year. So if you lose Chris Beard, who do you replace him with? That's part of it. At Arkansas, they wanted Musselman to leave. Musselman wanted to leave. That's why the Ole Miss thing, the Ole Miss Chris Beard Arkansas thing was percolating in January Mm -hmm. because there's more to it than just one thing. So once he doesn't get Chris Beard, and I don't know how serious the Jerome Tang thing was, I, he used Arkansas to get as leverage to get more out of Kansas State. Did he really have an offer from Arkansas? I don't know. Who, who gives a shit? But then after that, something obviously happened on Friday that put John Calipari on their radar, and they used Will Wade and Chris Jans and the guy at Little Rock as, as distraction for a day to get it done. That's where I'm going here. The biggest winner in this is actually John Calipari. Sure. Because he gets a reset. He gets tons of money. He gets mm-hmm. the NIL to do things the way he does it. The biggest limbo here and the biggest risk is Arkansas because you got this guy that's going to, again, combine. You're getting all the positives. Again, this is not me saying it's a bad hire. It's a phenomenal hire. You did a, an A+. Plus. You're a check. Good job. Congratulations. He's been bad at Kentucky. Who says he's about to go take over at Arkansas and win? And when you do that, he takes up so much damn oxygen. Sure. You've cratered your football program. Arkansas's football program has never been worse than right now this morning. No argument it's here. It's freaking over. Sure. I think they knew it was over. I think. But they- when you come out and acknowledge it in that way, where you go, we don't give a shit. Well, you don't give a shit for now, right? But but no, you can't give a shit later. You sure can't you pay can. him seven in, in NIL Who and give says? 25 at football. We don't know this anymore. This they don't what, have that money. I, I don't know. You've been up there. I've been up there. There's a hell of a lot of money. They're not going to pay $50 million in NIL a year. Well, no, but who is? My point is, though, when basketball takes up that much, 
I don't know. You're either going to tell Cal no to things and he's going to get pissed off and that's going to crater. Sure. Or you're not going to be able to help the new guy enough in football because you're starting from the very beginning. Oh, 100%. One or the other. 100%. But it's a win for your check today. Oh, 100%. No, no, no. Sure. I mean, he goes from having a, a fractured fan base and a coach that's kind of weird that a lot of people liked and a lot of people didn't like to a guy that they'll rally around. Mm-hmm. They've raised a ton of money. Oh, he gets a great reset. He gets, like I said, he's the winner. He gets all the Little Rock money for the first time in forever behind basketball. It had gone away because they were pissed off at the Tyson mm-hmm. people. Sure. The Tyson people were pissed off at the Hunt people. And now they're all in it together. And may, Will they win? I don't know. He's, will they have talent? Yeah. Well, 100%. That's, that's, that was what I was getting at a minute ago. This is what people in our field just can't catch up to. Because something happened before 2020 doesn't mean shit anymore. It doesn't matter anymore. It doesn't matter to Chris Beard that over the last 40 years, Arkansas was a better basketball job than Ole Miss. It doesn't matter. It's completely immaterial. Well, in Arkansas, it's what it's how much salary. I'm not calling it NIL anymore. How much salary can you have to buy players? That's what it is. How much salary can you have to buy players? And then it's up to you to manage that money appropriately. It's frankly, it's what Kiffin's done so well. Yeah, sure. It's not like Kiffin has the most salary to buy rosters. He doesn't have as much salary as Georgia does. So he has to be efficient. They have to make, he talked about it the other day. They're bringing in these personnel people literally to put valuations on players. Mm -hmm. So Calipari at 65, if he's going to make it work at Arkansas, he's obviously going to have the money to go out and get players. He's got to make smart decisions. And if you put the talent on the floor, then he's got a other. I don't know about the whole offense, defense. Part, Arkansas will drool over any of his results from 2012 to 2019. Sure, and it is a hellscape if the results are 2020 to now. 100. percent I'm interested, but we'll see. Here's where they were. They were at a place where big, big boosters were out, and now they're in. Do you want them out or do you want them in? You want them in. How long do they stay in? How does it work? I don't know. But look, something happened on Friday night. I wrote about it in 10 Thoughts. I'm somewhat educated on this. I talked to a couple people early this morning so that I wouldn't just completely miss it. Calipari knew people at Tyson. They were friends. Has connections in Northwest Arkansas. Has always talked positively about that school, about that job. And on Friday night, somebody called Hunter Juracek and said, you should call him. You should explore it. And it happened fast. Again, zero buyout. He left with nothing. Nothing. Yep. Everybody walks away. He's getting eight million a year at Arkansas. Everybody in that deal won. Kentucky won. They get to reset, move on. He wins. He gets to doesn't have to deal with that fan base. He's great on the honeymoon. Oh boy. Oh, he's really good. And Arkansas wins because now your fan base, as it pertains to basketball, is the opposite of fractured. They're completely in. It's a win for yeah. them. That's it's, it's what I keep coming to do. He just he had all the money in the world of Kentucky and was average the last few years. Sure. So what what's different? That's my question. I don't know. Maybe it's he, worth the gamble. Yeah. I mean, if you're Arkansas, what choice did you have? When, yeah, yeah, yeah. If, when you're Hunter Urechek and you find out on Friday night that you might be able to get John Calipari, what are you going to do? Nah, we'll hire Chris Jans. No. I mean, Arkansas went down the Will Wade road. They obviously felt enough resistance to go, this isn't worth it. Sure. It's like if you're Alabama today, you're in an absolute state of panic because how the hell would you replace Nate Oates? You're hiring Bucky McMillan now? They went to the Final Four and were respectable in a national semifinal game against probably the best team in the country. Yeah, he has to change his philosophy to some extent. That's what he has to do. Sure. He's 65. Yeah. But he's going to have a shit ton of talent to figure it out with, as is the case every Well, year. and at some point, when you have the talent on the floor, look, going to the first round and losing is unsatisfactory at, at Kentucky. He wouldn't get as much pushback at Arkansas. Even if they're putting $15 million a year into the program? 
Not at first. They just went 6-12 and 12 with locker room issues ab- abundant. Mm-hmm. He'll put a better roster together. They'll have talent. Kind of gets back to the Beard thing. That's the pressure on Beard now. Okay, now you've got to rebuild your roster, and you don't get the benefit of, hey, we're going to build this thing. No, it doesn't work like that. Put it together, man. That's what people are going to say. Now, the answer here, and I, I, I get that I'm pulling out anecdotes. Mm-hmm. Understand that. No, Kentucky can't hire Will Wade. No, they, hell no. no. They, they, they didn't think about it. Kentucky, no, look, it's still an elite. Everyone but Hurley and Self is on the table. I think yes. that's correct. And I think I think either one of them would at least take the oh, phone call. Oh, yeah, sure. There's literally not. I don't think there's a coach in the country that wouldn't take the phone call. Are there coaches that you couldn't get at Kentucky? Yeah, probably those two. But Dan Hurley would take that phone call. Nate Oates did a phenomenal job putting a transfer portal roster together. Mm-hmm. It was almost all it was stars from other places. Yeah. He got Grant Nelson. He got Mark Sears. He got all that shit, and it worked. Yeah. Purdue and Connecticut are playing for the title tonight, and they're pretty homegrown. Purdue has four starters that originally signed with Purdue. Yeah. UConn has three, yeah. including Klingon, obviously. Basketball is such a team game with chemistry. Mm-hmm. Are we all going about it the wrong way? Probably. And every fan base that goes, nope, win now and go to the portal, and you go, that's not actually how you win. Isn't that at least a valid thought? Sure. That you go, no, we got to recruit. We got to take high school kids and let it work. But what's, And then fill in. But what's the patience level at Ole Miss if he goes, hey, we're going to do this the old-fashioned way? Well, I think you have to admit it. There's no way to even con- maybe make it work. And when you go 5-13 and 13 in the league, the next season everybody's kind of pissed off. Yeah. I mean, in some ways, this is what Dan Hurley was doing when he made that statement in 20. You better get us now. Okay, I get it. Bill Nova's better. It's fine. We're taking our lumps. Okay. And yeah. now it's turned into prophecy. I get that. Sure. He also hates the portal, as he said on Twitter yesterday. Yeah. Well, I mean, look. He said the best part of winning right now is that it kept him out of the portal. He, I, could, he could fight that he was still just coaching. I get it. I mean, the portal's stupid if you think about it. Mm-hmm. I mean, privately. I don't know many coaches who think this system is very good. Yeah, those two guys have they've been there for a while and they've they've done it their way. Would you rather have Oates or Drew? Well, I think Scott Drew's the best coach in the country. Do you really? Yeah. Okay. So I'm not the right person to ask that. Okay. But look, either one are very, very good. I mean, if Nate Oates has Kentucky's resources, whew, I mean he's very good. Yeah, sure. They play a very entertaining, entertaining I style love their of basketball. Style of basketball. Kentucky fans would absolutely drool over it. Scott Drew just wins. He's very good at what he does. No, he's, I mean, he's, look. A, he's an elite recruiter. He, he runs a great program. There's, there's a lot, there's a lot there. Sure, he wears a sport coat. He does. No, UConn, Alabama was a freaking fun basketball game yeah. the other night. Yeah. The ball movement was extraordinary. Yeah. Alabama, so, so Alabama made UConn beat them, and then yeah. they did. Yeah. Yeah, sure. UConn's great. Klingon's just phenomenal. He's played. I mean, well. Bama played almost as well as they could possibly play. Mm-hmm. They were like 80% from three in the first half and down four, and you went, oh, my God. Yeah, eight for 11 from three. Played, down four. Played great. There's nothing to be ashamed of. You just can't have a break. You have one break, and it's over. It's over. And they had one little slip, and... And actually, it was just UConn played out of its mind. Oh, I'd love to be Matt Jones this morning. KSR is going to have some, the have have some hits. Had oh yeah, up there fun. I mean, if you're Kentucky, you you got to get it right because you 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 can generally get who you want. There's there's pressure to that. Of course. Hey, go. The world is your oyster. Make the best hire. Here are these supermodels. Now go pick the smart one. Yeah. Yeah, on paper, it's going to be a good hire no matter what, but who's the right hire? Yeah, who's you got to get it right. And you got to get somebody who can handle that. Which is... To I mean, Calipari's credit, grinder. to Calipari's credit, for a long time, he handled that. Oh, he's phenomenal at it. And then it just got bad. Who they lose to? Monmouth and then Oakland? Or somebody St. Like that. Peter's. St. Peter's. And then Oakland. Yeah. St. Peter's did go to the Elite Eight. They did. And then Oakland. Yeah. You can't lose those games. Who got beat by NC State? Barely. Is that right? Yeah, barely. 
Since you're saying that Matt Jones thinks it will be Drew, but the majority of the fan base will be negative toward that. Whew. That's it, your point. He could be the a, bar is that's what so I'm saying. They that they will pick out one person that they want it to be, mm-hmm. and if it's not them, it's 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 hell going in. Well, Nate Oates is the hot supermodel right now, on yeah. top of his game. Yeah. Just got everything all fixed up. Everything's perfect right now. And in the league, they've seen him a ton. Sure. Well, he's damn good. Hurts Alabama at the same time, which but, is nice. Yeah, but what is but the question, you know, it's it's one thing to handle an Alabama meat grinder where there isn't one. And it's another thing to go to Kentucky where okay. Be perfect. Win the national championship. Was it Robert Morris that beat him in the NIT that year? That sounds right. Is that correct? I don't know if it's correct or not. But Somebody's it name. Right, I think yeah. it was Robert Morris. I think that I think that's it. I have to look. I'm I'm all in. I'm fascinated. We'll see. To your point, uh, TP. Yeah, Cal runs an outdated system. They still won <laughs> games. They had talent. When they shot well, they were tough. Not excusing his performance. Again, I'm. this is that deal where and I think fans struggle with this. Everything must be a win or a loss. I think there's a lot of winners here. This is one of those deals where it almost feels like someone in the SEC orchestrated it. I don't believe that, but it, if you told me it happened, I'd buy it. Yeah, the, the clear winner is, is Cal. But there are several winners. No, well, Kentucky's there's really a, not a loser. No, in Kentucky's this. a big winner. Yeah. Cal's a big winner. He gets to get out of that. Who knows? Maybe this will be refreshing to him. Arkansas wins. Ole Miss won because it could have been a disaster for Ole Miss Friday morning. Where you're talking about, okay, what do you do now? Do you hire Bucky McMillan? How do you sell that? <laughs> do you bring Mike White home? How do yeah, you sell yeah. that? That's the conversations we were going to be having. Instead, Ole Miss steps up and flexes its muscles and goes, nope, the old days are the old days. We're big boys now. Yeah, you don't get to just call and take him and move on with your day. Arkansas could have gone from that and gone, oh, well, I guess we're done. Let's hire Chris Jans and we'll play really slow and hope it works. No, they didn't. They went and made a big splash. People are talking about Arkansas basketball this morning. And now Kentucky gets to have – that's wins. Yeah. And, and Greg Sankey doesn't have to worry about Will Wade for at least a year. Yeah. And next year, deal with it. Those are that's, those are wins. That's tomorrow's problem. I'll tell you the other person, if I'm Kentucky, that I put a call into, Bruce Pearl. Yeah. At least inquire. I know somebody who could handle that. Did you call Mark Pugh? Probably not. Okay. I mean, he's a really good coach. Nine straight Sweet 16s. I mean, damn. But no, come on. Is there any indication that he's ready to – He's never dealt with anything like what you deal with at Kentucky. No. That's a it's it's just a totally different beast. Fans, media, you're everyone's Super Bowl. You know, it is here. Kentucky's coming to town. It's a different feel. Go to a game at the pavilion when Kentucky's in town. Go to the SEC tournament when Kentucky's on the floor. Mm-hmm. Tell me it's not different. Yeah, it's yeah. different. We have a little more basketball after the break. We'll do that tell you about GNM Pharmacy, 662-236-2222. They deliver it locally in the Oxford area, and they offer med saint free prescriptions the same day each month and take care of you. One trip to the pharmacy, one delivery. You have everything you need when you need it with GNM. Again, that's also Tyson Drugs on the square in Holly Springs. They transfer your medications very easily. One phone call, they take care of the rest. So, again, in Oxford on South Lamar, that's 662-236-2222. Uh, we are also brought to you by our friends at Service Specialist, Service Specialist Staffing and Recruiting Agency, connecting great job opportunities to candidates since 1967. If you're on the job hunt, whether you're seeking an entry-level position or you're a seasoned professional, they have opportunities across the board. IT, engineering, dentistry, accounting, law, manufacturing, human resources. Maybe you don't even know what you're looking for. They can help you at Service Specialist. It's always free for the candidates. Always uh, confidential conversations, so you've got nothing to lose by giving them a call. 601-573-9242 or service specialist, ltd.com. Oxford's newest Greek restaurant on the square, OPA, is the perfect place to plan your Christmas party, your uh, company dinner, your festive party event, whatever the case may be. Fabulous food, great craft libations. It's also a great place to stop in if you're coming up for the weekend. Uh, baseball, the Grove Bowl, they can accommodate up to 200 guests. For catering information, for booking information, call 
Genie 601-421-7147. Don't forget this weekend, also, especially during the daytime hours, stop by uh, Rafters Music and Food on the square in Oxford. You can catch up on what's happening with the Masters. You can uh, watch some college baseball from around uh, the rest of the SEC and more. Uh, enjoy, uh, enjoy good food, great drinks there at Rafters Music and Food on the square in Oxford. Get the beautiful and healthy smile you deserve at Corinth Dental. Dr. Bubba McQueen, Dr. Jenny Beth Hendrick are devoted to restoring and enhancing the natural beauty of your smile using conservative, state-of-the-art procedures that will result in a beautiful, long-lasting smile. From routine checkups to advanced treatment, including implants and Invisalign, Corinth Dental is here to help you achieve your smile goals. So schedule your appointment today. Take the first step toward a better version of yourself. It's CorinthDental.com. Tonight for um, Purdue and UConn, again, you get the uh, the battle of the two best big men in the country. Zach Eady against Donovan Klingon. His shitting will be quite important in, uh, in this one for yeah. the finale tonight, as will Dan Hurley's heart rate throughout the uh, the evening. UConn, uh, their first single-digit line in a long time, favored by 7.5 tonight against Purdue. It was 11.5 against Alabama. They have covered... God knows how many games in a row. They have won every NCAA tournament game since the start of last season by at least 13 points. Wow. Um, And then now they are uh, seven and a half tonight for the title, 820 on TBS for uh, Purdue and UConn. I would like to see UConn win the basketball game. Um, I'm all in on Huskies. Really like Dan Hurley a lot. Um, He cracks me up. He's very good. He's excellent. He's excellent. He relentless is a good word. It was in the stream. He he doesn't stop. It is Oh, if I'm and listen, if I'm Kentucky, I don't rush today. Uh, let today go by. Then I'm picking up the phone tomorrow and going, Hey, I suspect you're not interested, but just in case. Yeah. You wanna you wanna I'd, I'd like you to wanna make, hear about it? I'd like to make you think about this for a moment. Yeah. What's ten I, mi- what's ten minutes of your time? I'm at least going to make you tell Kentucky no. Yeah. Where you get out of bed at night going, I told Kentucky no. I'm calling his agent. And going, hey, don't bother him today. Yeah, yeah. Good luck to the Huskies. Yeah. Um. <laughs> sometime tonight when it's over, shoot me a text. Just let him know we'd love to talk. Yeah. Millions of us would love to talk. Yeah. Probably tens of millions of us would love to talk. They can afford it. I think he'd say no. Why not? And that's the other thing too. This whole oh, getting said no to. Screw that. Who cares? Who cares? I mean, I wish I'd had that philosophy in high school, but but now that I'm I'm, I'm smart enough to know it, that you got turned down. Okay, people got to laugh at you. It doesn't matter. That won't matter at all when the balls start bouncing. Yeah, you don't start in a deficit because someone told you no. You still know. got your coach, still, and it's still it is. just keep going. Yeah. Calipari's final record at Kentucky is uh, 410 and 123. 122, one or the other. He goes 198 and 65 in SEC play. And then, uh, yes, he is. He was in the round of 32 in 2022, 2023. So he's won one game since an Elite Eight appearance in 2019 is what Cal finishes. Hot as hell early, though. Yeah. He went to the Elite Eight in his first year, went to the Final Four in his second year, won the title in his third year in 2011, 2012. That team went 38 and 2 and 16 and 0 in the SEC. He was the uh, the runner up in uh, 2013 14, despite of losing 11 games. That was kind of that strange team. Then he went Final Four, round of 32, Elite Eight. One of those was that 38 and one team that lost to Wisconsin in the uh, in the Final Four. And then again, Sweet 16, Elite Eight, and it fell apart after that mm-hmm. for the uh, the Wildcats. So that's where as that a starts. tremendous NBA pedigree that helps him on the recruiting trail. He can absolutely do the Nick Saban thing where he goes, "I know how to get you to the league." Oh, that's and that part can't be recruited against. He can. He puts more tons than anyone else of guys in the league, and he'll do it at Arkansas. He will. He's done it everywhere he's ever been. What will be interesting for Cal is to see: Does this reset give him a, some new juice, or is he just old? No, he lost some juice. Like I saw people doing the Houston nut comparison. I don't. Mm. I don't think that's. Oh no no, no! 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 Houston, no! Houston nuts not in John Calipari's ballpark. Come on. I mean. Come on. Houston Nutt didn't make Ole Miss, Ole Miss football relevant. Calipari will make ESPN, 
you watch how many games ESPN picks up with the Hogs next year because of Cal. He's a big name in the sport. Yeah. Do you think Billy Donovan's might be real? I mean, I think he'd listen. Okay. It's probably the one job he'd listen to. Here's the other crazy one. I hate going here because it's rumors, but there is a rumor about another SEC head coach. You can't do that. No, I like him. No, no, I'm saying, but if he if if he gets dismissed, who gets that job? Because that's a one of those weird jobs that can be really good and can be sort of mediocre. What do you do there? I don't know. That's my point. What and what's the money there? Because that's my deal. I keep going back to this. It's changed now. What's your what is your player salary pool at these places? Yeah, historically, the Ole Miss job's been a bad to mediocre job. Doesn't mean that it will be now. Doesn't mean that what it won't be in 10 years. I don't know. I mean, who knows? But today, I don't know how good that job is. So Cal's taking three different teams to the Final Four. UMass, Memphis, Kentucky. Mm-hmm. And then now at Arkansas. Okay. I mean, again, I go back to this. If you're Hunter, you're a check on Friday night. Oh, you did fine. Yeah, yeah. It, it, it's you. You couldn't let it get out that hey, you could have gotten Calipari and you didn't, and you hired Chris Jans. You couldn't sell that. No, and that's what you your, your job as an. That's like Keith Carter. I mean, I'm sure that some of the money probably got a little bit uncomfortable. I mean, you got this baseball thing coming up. You know, I mean, it might be coming up. This baseball thing, it's a real thing. It's money. It's real money. Either way. Yeah. Right. So probably wasn't like, probably two months ago, if I said, hey, you're going to be paying your basketball coach five plus million, he probably would have been like, no, probably not. But you get to a place where it's, what, we, okay, we have to do this. It's it's interesting to watch yeah, it's people not utopia. make. I have two choices. You got to pick one, one yeah. way or the other. If I let him walk. Okay. Okay. Now I got to replace him. With who? And now I got to tell people, no, no, we're committed to basketball here. Yeah. Well, you don't look that committed now. And now if you're Ole Miss, if you're Keith Carter, Keith Carter looks really damn committed to basketball now. Like really committed. If there was any doubt, it's gone. Not for, Frankly, yeah. I had no doubt. But, I mean, dude's a hell of an AD at this point in the stuff that matters. I hear people do the stuff about spring sports and whatnot. Whatever. Who cares? No offense to anybody, but. No ADs getting judged on what the men's tennis team does. Nobody's going. I tell you what, that Hunter Yurchek's one hell of an AD. Have you seen their track and field program? Nobody does that, Chase. No. It's because it's total bullshit. Nobody goes LSU man. They got it rolling. Have you looked at their gymnastics? Nobody does that. It's it's football, men's basketball, and then you get some women's basketball, baseball, and softball. That's about yeah, it. Depending on the university, and depending where you on are yeah, and what where... people care about. I mean, Ole Miss looks really damn committed right now. And then later that day, I think, if the timeline's correct, Juracek got that put in front of him, and he had to look at that and go, okay, I wanted Beard. We positioned ourselves for Beard. We didn't get him, not from a lack of effort. Mm -hmm. Probably Hunter Juracek saving his own job, too. Sure. Well, I mean, I can tell you, mm -hmm. is he, if he hires Chris Jans, yeah. it's not, he's not It's making. over. Because he's got this football disaster in front of him. Well, now, for him, the football disaster doesn't go away. But now maybe you've convinced people to help you get involved where the football disaster can get mitigated to some degree come November. Yeah. But the the big initial winner here is Ole Miss. You held off a, a significant offer. Yeah. And now you know just how significant the offer was because you see the numbers that Arkansas is pouring into John, John Calipari. They wanted to get Chris Beard, and they went after him aggressively. Yeah. <clears throat> kind of finishing up this basketball thing for the day. You uh, Would you lay the seven and a half tonight Yeah. on UConn? Yeah. Until proved otherwise, yeah, they're just, you, you they're, ride it. They're kind of like Alabama football a few years ago where you're just like, yeah, lay them, whatever. I mean, eventually I'll lose, but. Purdue thirty four and four, UConn thirty six and three on the uh, on the season. Purdue trying to do what Virginia did a few years ago, lose to a sixteen seed and come back and win the national title the next season. Hey, credit um, to them for getting here. No, oh, yeah, yeah. Everybody spent the whole year going, oh, they're going to lose the first round because they did last year. And they didn't. 
They're in the national title game. It's a hell of an accomplishment for Matt Painter in that program. Period. Oh, he's on a hell of a job. And again, I mean, I, I don't like their style of basketball, but Zach Eady seems like a good dude. It's not negative yeah. against Zach Eady. Zach Eady said he came back to get to this place. This is why he came back. It was the only reason. He could have gone and gotten some NBA money. Mm-hmm. He'll play in the NBA. He's not going to be a starter. He's not going to be a superstar, but he'll play in the NBA. He made Shaq look small when they shook hands the other day. He's a huge guy. He was bigger than Shaq. Yeah. But he came back and came back for this, and it's a great story. Kudos to them. Yeah. We're so negative in what we do that, we spend the whole year being negative, and they just win. I don't particularly enjoy watching them play, but they're very effective. It works. And Matt Painter seems like a really solid dude. No, it's why I'm careful to go, I just don't enjoy watching them not be a hypocrite because we get on coaches who try to rethink things. They have the best player, and they run the ball through the best player. Yeah. What you should be doing. Sure. Literally every possession. I mean, if if – what what's her name from Iowa was going, hey, you know, we're we're gonna play around and Caitlin's a decoy tonight. And you go, what the hell are you doing? Same thing. Yeah. Run it through Zach Eady and play that way and play the game and, and move on and, and, and do it in that way. I mean, I don't know. Um there's no way Must didn't have more than a million dollars in an aisle. That was impossible. He had more than one, but he yeah. didn't have anything close to five. Well, yeah, yeah. That's two different yeah. tiers in a lot of ways. I don't know. It'll be fun tonight. I'm, I mean, the, the, the tournament has delivered for the most part. Um, I don't know what ratings will be because, again, TBS is such a bad spot for this game. No, it's been a good tournament. Yeah, it's been a good tournament. I mean, you know, it's been a pretty good year for college basketball all in all. And if you're the SEC, I mean, hell, SEC basketball media days just got interesting. Maybe for the first time in a long I mean, the, time, the, if not ever. I mean, the league is stacked. Because they run this through, what, one year? I mean, one day, sorry. Mm, two, two days. Two? They, yeah, because they, yeah. Okay. I haven't been in a long time. I, so I haven't been in ages. Yeah. I haven't been since the Andy team at some point. I feel like I went over there for something. So, yeah, it's been something like that. But a lot of SEC programs really committed today. And watching what Kentucky will do will be absolutely fascinating. Because it's been a minute since they've done a job search. And they've done a great job and hired Cal with some of them, and they hired Billy Gillespie with one of them. So, we'll yeah. see what. Again, it's not a guarantee. See what happens. Not everybody can handle that. I mean, I'm being repetitive, but not everybody can handle that. Not everybody can handle Alabama football. I've watched people not handle it. Yes, it should be on CBS. The final should be on CBS. It should be. It, it defies guess. logic. Yeah. This is when... We are trying to watch your your game. Stop making it complicated. Major League Baseball, stop. Just yeah. let us watch what we would like to watch. Yeah. By the way, last thing on that, and we'll go to the last segment and come back. Major League Baseball Players Association blaming the pitch clock and not spin rates and arm angles and velocities for all the injuries. Did you see this? Oh, yes, I did. What are we doing? Shut up. We don't want to admit the truth. And when you don't want to admit the truth, you you don't. You come up with another reason. I have no your, idea. Your pants are too tight because you put them in the dryer, not because you've gained five pounds. Yeah, It's so stupid. Mm-hmm. It's about tons of things outside of pitch clocks. That's not what's causing no, it's, it's, injured arms. It's year-round travel ball. It's kids throwing sliders at 10 years old. And it's just lack of form, period. Yes, and it's just a lack of paying attention to rest. I mean, I don't know if it's true. I have no clue. But I saw that thing that's taken over Twitter the last two days with the guy that believes he's right. He's like some so-called expert. Again, if he's not, I don't know. I have okay. all his credentials. Sure. He was talking about relievers versus starters and velocities, and he was he was comparing Alex Reyes with um, Justin Verlander. And Verlander, for the most part, has been healthy. I get he's been banged up now, but a long time, a lot of durability. And the form that when you're – plant foot hits the ground your front foot hits the ground if your arm is flat versus if your arm is up into a 90 and the exponential changes on torque into your elbow at that juncture and that people with bad form and relievers especially they are flatter right there and when they come through it is leading with the elbow and creating way more torque and way more issues as it comes through. more torque than the body is and i would buy that meant to yeah yeah i think i think i would buy that yeah, the human elbow, as I said in the stream, is not made to throw a baseball. Mm-mm. 
Certainly it's not. not a natural movement. Certainly not like that over and over and over and over and over again. Yeah, so again, I I have no idea if it's legitimate, but when I read through it, I went, yeah, I mean that 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 kind of makes sense to me. I can't completely completely rule that out at that uh at, at that point. So you can find that. I I know Thomas Morstead, the punter, tweeted it, but it had been seen millions of times. But that's just where I ran across it this morning. So anyway, a little more basketball. Some other stuff coming up after the break. First, Northeast Spark N E S P A R C. Service people across rural communities, a couple packages, the Ignite, the 100 Mbps, or the Blaze. That is their one gig, their fastest option available. Your hometown team bringing you world-class broadband. That's anyspark.com, 662-238-3159. Phone servers, front controls, network security, wireless mesh extender for those who need extra help and more. Again, that's 662-238-3159. Hit the wrong one. Are you a uh, displaced corporate executive wanting to put your career in your own hands? Are you an experienced entrepreneur looking to diver- diversify? Andy Ludicky can help. He owns multiple franchises and businesses and uses his expertise to help others find their American dream through a very thorough and free consultation process. So call Andy. Put your life and your career in your own hands. It's 100% free. You've got nothing to lose. MyPerfectFranchise.net. Andy at MyPerfectFranchise.net or 404-973-9901. Southern Traditions Farm is a 68-acre, 32-stall upscale equestrian training and boarding facility in Canton, Mississippi. Two sand rings, a grass ring, miles of wooded trails, so much offered at Southern Traditions, including horseback riding offerings from beginner lessons to advanced to competing in nationally recognized competitions. Um, It's also a great venue uh, as the spring and summer roll around. It's a great venue for corporate outings, for uh, reunions, that type of thing. So get in touch with them on Facebook or Instagram at Southern Traditions Farm. Uh, I'll have a mailbag up to you on Wednesday. It is presented by Art Hayes, Sotheby's International Realty. If you're thinking of making a move, put the power of Sotheby's International Realty to work for you. As a licensed agent and a supporter of all things Ole Miss, Art Hayes can help you buy or sell in your hometown. Seriously, Uh, give him a call. Find out how. 612-805-5929 or email uh, art at Arthur, A R T H U R dot Hayes, H A Y S, at lakesmn.com. Haven't seen uh, the viewership numbers yet on yesterday's women's final. The um, semifinal that I was playing in did 14.2 over, uh, over UConn. Yeah. That is the um, most watched women's basketball game of. Uh, of all time, I would assume yesterday eclipsed that. It was on ABC. I would think so. And a championship. South Carolina wins by 12. They were bigger, faster, stronger, all those things. Yeah. They uh more complete. It said, it said there, it brings back up, hey, go get a post player because you need some help there. Uh, they put them away after a uh, a really early Iowa flurry. Um, and they made a run late, closed it a couple it times. Five and just, just couldn't get past that. Couldn't. Just Jones could. Good. Yeah, boy. Really, really good. I mean, they are. They're they're incredible. And now, look, the media story that will be fascinating going into next year is, and it's it's not. It's like the total eclipse. Okay, it's not zero or a hundred. Mm-hmm. There are levels here. Yeah. But is Caitlin Clark the Big Bang Theory that kicks this off into a different stratosphere, or is she just a shooting star? And we all kind of go, Oof, and it falls back off to something into a more manageable pace again. Not zero. Not a hundred. Yeah. But where on that scale this thing falls moving forward? I think the tournament will continue to be big. The question is, can they will they have any regular season momentum where they can get people to watch games in the regular season? Because that'll be so player based. Because I mean, you know, I watched Iowa because she was playing. I think I will watch Paige Beckers in big games. Okay. I will be interested in Juju Watkins to some extent. Okay. That's two. That's about where I'm at. Yeah, I'm, I'm I'm close. I'm with uh, GJG here. I'm closer to shooting star than I am Big Bang Theory. Yeah, I mean it's it, it, it's that's it, it's where I don't people who really have been pushing for women's sports this way. I don't blame the excitement. It's just not a guarantee right. that it sticks. I mean, sure. And her in the WNBA is going to be really fascinating. But do we care in the same way? No. And the answer is no. No. So I don't. But look, there's only- it's what's so weird about the sport, and I don't mean that in a negative way, just different from a media landscape of you move to the professional where there's less interest. That doesn't happen in any other sport in that way. 
and you know, do we care that hey, she's coming in and trying to displace the veteran? Like, I don't know, not really. Not really. No. Nope. We don't know the teams. We like it. It takes a full integration period in a way that I just don't know that. Well, there's only so much, only so much time in the day. That's true too. Yeah, I guess that's a good point. Is are we are we going to give the discretionary amount of brain power and watch time to that to make it make an impact? They're gonna they're gonna do great in arenas. They're gonna do with, they're gonna do great with crowds. People going to see her play. There's no doubt about that. Yeah, people will go see the Indiana Fever who would never go see the Indiana Fever home and away. But am I watching on television? People, people, you know how this is. People almost get mad at sometimes people like you and me. Did you see this? Did you see this? It's like, hey, man, I, I got the same amount of hours in the day that you do. Mm-hmm. I, mean, I spent five of mine watching quarterbacks throw footballs yesterday. You, you enjoy that? Was it fun? It was not fun. Not fun. You saw the talent of tomorrow. I did. I did. The McIntyre kid's really good. Is he? Really good. Kind of skinny right now, but really good. Deuce Knight, really good. The well, kid who's committed to Florida State, can't think of his name right now, really good. I was worried that something had caught fire yesterday because I was we, I, I was in Memphis watching Wicked for all, full disclosure yesterday, and I had my phone on sleep mode. Well, you know, you can't get through, you know, typically we'll just whatever. And I don't know how many times you called. I have no idea. Just once. Oh, did you really? Mm -hmm. Well, then it it had a glitch then because typically when it's on that mode, it takes multiple calls from one of my favorites lists to get through. And because we talk a lot, I have you on on that list. I'm honored. Yeah, thank Thank you. you. That's good. Yeah. I'm a favorite. A Mount Rushmore it's right there on my time. favorites list. Well, you talked to a lot of people. If I make a favorite. It did. It was on my favorites I mean, list. There you go. And I looked down and my watch was buzzing. It was you. And I thought, you called three times in five minutes. That's not common unless something yeah, no. clicked there. It so it just something. it just happened to go through then. Yeah. I was like, oh. Yeah. And at intermission, I walked I out and once. called. And I was like, well, I see them burn down. I was, looking to, they, I, was, I was looking to bitch to somebody. They, I was they, I was needed. I needed to vent to somebody who would understand what I was venting about. They fired Mike yesterday. What are we doing? Like, what's the situation? I mean, I, obviously they did it, <laughs> but I thought that would be my luck. Is right here, right now is when I got to figure that out with yeah. no phone service in the Orpheum. Well, that's is, right. I is, think you. I think you would be justified in calling some people at the Lyceum or the, in the athletic building and going, "You sons of bitches!" Just yell at everyone. Yeah, come on. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I think there's some uh, there's, there's some truth there. I don't want to spend a lot of time on it, but I think we're not doing our job if we don't mention it. Ole Miss goes to Fayetteville, gets swept. They're yeah, three and, and, and I was going to leave yeah, tomorrow with it. Um, it just, I, we're going to talk about it a lot tomorrow, but three and nine. They're on pace to win 7.25 games, I think is the number. State at home this weekend. State six and six. State's, state's capable of, of beating Ole State Miss. State is playing pretty well right now. Where is this thing? It's the same place it was last week. I, I wrote about this. Well, full disclosure again, I wrote about yesterday morning, not Saturday afternoon, because it didn't matter at the moment. Um, Mike Bianco, and they don't do Zooms a lot of days on getaways because they're always in a hurry. Yeah. That's not, he was dodging questions on yeah. Saturday. It's the way it sets up, just FYI there. For, it's for one of the reasons where sometimes people say, why don't y'all cover some of the road yeah, football it's games? Not it's not the same. Because the, the, the moment that the clock hits zero, the emphasis is on getting the hell out. It's fast. So, a couple things here, and we'll set it up for tomorrow. Mm-hmm. Is Mike for the first time this season, and he was asked a question that didn't automatically go there. Brad doing his Ole Miss radio job, not a criticism to Brad Henderson, right? Because sometimes I feel terrible for him going, "What's I he? Do. What's he too. asking here?" I do too. And he was like, "Hey, we, you know, we, we were kind of in it, just didn't get there, did that." And Mike started off and goes, "I know everybody's frustrated." Fans are frustrated. We're frustrated. I understand all the frustration. And he went big picture, which was the first time this season Mike had done that in an answer. And I thought, sounded a lot like last year. Sounded yeah. a lot like Arkansas two years ago at 7-14 and 14 before it turned around, yeah. all those things. And I went, I get it. And it probably wasn't a bad time to do that, but it's also acknowledging it in a way that's feel – you don't know how much weight to put on things sometimes, but it just felt bigger then maybe even he meant it just in a post-game radio interview right there. Um, 
no, look, three and nine's bad. I mean, just start doing math. And to have a chance at the NCAA tournament, they would have to go 10 and eight the rest of the way just to have a chance, probably 11 and seven. So you start doing math in that way. Um, I think they've played three of their four toughest series to date. I mean, if you're going to be a, if, yes. if, you're not, look, we're not making the argument they should be nine and three. Okay. But if you think they're not three and nine bad, your argument for that is they played Kentucky and Arkansas who are combined 22 and two, 22 to and two this season mm-hmm. at Tennessee is a tough road trip, even though Tennessee's around 500, six and five, five and six, somewhere in there. No, they played a hard, very hard schedule. They and have. They, yeah. they absolutely the schedule have. has been very difficult. I mean, Carolina's not a pushover. You don't get to eleven and one in the SEC. No. I don't care how you do it. You don't get to eleven and one in the SEC without being a pretty good team. So at a minimum, Kentucky and Arkansas are pretty good teams. That's more than fair. They're going to host things because math says they're going to host things. So, and I think Kentucky's actually fairly good. I think they're I, starting to play with this level of confidence. I do. They, that, I love their identity and, frankly, taking the identity of Mingione. They've yeah. done a phenomenal job there with how they've ma- they manufactured and, that thing. And Arkansas kind of plays with Van Horn's personality. Yeah, yeah very, sure. They're just very professional, very professional, day-to-day level. Just get it done. Consistent. Yeah. They get better as the years go on. And they are relentless. They are. They just kind of come at you. So it's so all those things. So here's the schedule. Yeah, sure. It's Mississippi State for three. And again, a really volatile weekend because they're back at home. You're going to get a big crowd for the Grove Bowl stuff. Everybody's going to be in town. It's your rival that you haven't beaten home or away since 2015. Yeah. And Ole Miss is 6-18 and 18 in the last 24 home games. At Georgia. No pushover. Here's the one. I'm just going to go ahead and tell you now. 25th through the 27th, Ole, uh, Ole Miss must sweep Alabama. It's double-decker. Again, big crowd. Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Ole Miss must sweep Alabama. If if they're if we're gonna even make a scenario, because you got to make up one of these sweeps. Yeah. Then after that, it's uh, at Auburn. So you catch a break. Auburn's two and ten. And then A and M and LSU. A and M at home at LSU. A and M's pretty good. LSU right now is three and nine. Yeah, LSU loses two out of three to Vanderbilt over the weekend. I mean, LSU doesn't look like world beaters. I, I, I guess my point is there's a path, but boy, the path has to start this weekend. Immediately. immediately you've got to get two you have to get at least six of the next nine yeah no you do you do you have to go oh. six and three in the next three series because that would put you at nine and 12 12 and you're okay you're okay you have a, you have a shot with auburn still to go and you try to start doing the math then at that point yeah because the goal now is 13 14 wins maybe do win a game in hoover and maybe you get the right draw that's it, it. forget the postseason Sure. But this team needed to get back to Hoover. the tournament. They need to get to Hoover. Well, okay. First and, and no foremost, right first now. and foremost, you got to get to Hoover. I think the weather's okay this weekend. The weather's crappy during the week, but I think we're okay during the weekend. Um, no, look, and, and we'll get to the bigger deal on 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 what's happened later. But it's development. I was, the one thing I will say, and there's a big thread on the board about it. And everybody keeps talking about, oh, Mike's not into the portal enough. Now that we're into the portal, now you can argue whether it's worked or not, but that's the same thing with Arkansas baseball or I mean, basketball or anything else. Sure. It's development. Because when you, when you develop, you don't need as much in the portal. And when guys come in from the portal to your team, there is this culture and identity established, and you fall into it. When you don't have a lot of leaders who are homegrown, it lets just chaos sort of happen in that way where nobody's ingrained in the mm-hmm. same way. That That's a huge part of this that doesn't get talked about enough. I mean, look at the kids that you just played. Yeah. At Arkansas. I mean, th- that starting pitching. Who did you know? Uh, Hagen Smith's been there a minute. Uh, Tigert's been there a minute. Peyton Stovall's been there a minute. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, they've uh, lo- uh, Diggs, Kendall Diggs. Oh, yeah. Been there a minute. You got guys that have that have you've got a core of uh the 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 closer that comes in the reliever I can't think of his name he, he's been there a while McIntyre thank you and Ole Miss look at their position players they don't you don't have Peyton back or TJ back or people yeah. and they they needed to go that's not yeah. the argument by the way the weather is supposed to be very nice seventy is high on Friday low of forty seven sunshine seventy nine on Saturday Ooh. low of fifty seven sunshine seventy nine on Sunday low of sixty one sunshine. So uh, weather looks good. 
So we'll get into a lot of baseball tomorrow. More thoughts there on that. Uh, Brian has two podcasts up on our network. He talked to Brock and Ray about basketball. That is up. And then he did his weekly baseball show with Colin as well. So both those. One of them is already in the system. I'll load Colin in a minute when we uh, we get off here. And you'll have that uh, that also. But, yeah, a little more women's basketball tomorrow. A little more baseball tomorrow. Um, I saved some other topics as uh, as well. Neil, as a, as a runner, you'd be glad to know the guy who decided he was going to run the entire continent of Africa. Did you see this? I did not. Um, he did. A guy ran from the very tip of Africa to the very top, um, essentially without stopping, if you will. I mean, I didn't sleep and eat and whatnot. Um, that was 9,941 miles. Dear God. He did it in 352 days. So just shy of a year, which averaged out to over 352 days, 376 marathons. So over a marathon a day for 352 days for this cat. He only got lost once. He, uh, he, he was not, no one knew where he was in the middle of a Congo jungle for about a day and a half during the route. But that was the only hiccup that he uh, he had there, if you want to call that a hiccup. I'd call it a hiccup. <laughs> yeah. I bet he saw some animals. As Jeffrey used to say, that monsters still exist. We just named them now. Yeah, I mean, there pe- are monsters. People would be questioning my toughness in the Congo. I got to tell you that. <laughs> just flat out. What there was that guy? He was on Rogan a few months ago. He's like a researcher in the Amazon. And he like was talking about all his like experiences with like Amazonian snakes and stuff Mm-mm. like jumping on their back and no, stuff. No, no. And they're like the, like, you know, the big ones, like the anaconda kind of yeah. deals. Yeah. I, I dream about them. You would die of a heart attack before the snake would actually bite you. God, I hope so. I think I'm Yeah. I think yeah. you're right. Yeah. So, I mean, I'm with ginger here. Why? I got nothing. I mean, sometimes the answer is just why not, but this is not one of those answers. Like, what are you, what are we doing? I'm doing completely random stuff now, and I will stop after this and shut up. I read a story that fascinated me in the New York Times yesterday. Um, I think it was free, so you might not, okay. not start the subscribe thing. He, uh, a guy moved into the New Yorker Hotel a couple years ago. Did you see this? No. All right, so he moved into the New Yorker Hotel a few years ago, and just didn't move out for over two years. For over two years, okay. he paid one night of rent. So for two years, he stayed in the New Yorker Hotel for $200.78 or something like that. And he was using some crazy old statute New York stabilized rent argument from like 1968. Uh And the hotel couldn't kick him out. He even applied for tax records and stuff saying he owned the entire hotel because there was no way to register owning one room in the hotel. Yeah. So he was like a complete pain in their ass for like two years. And he did. He spent two years in Manhattan in a hotel for $200 total. They are trying to put him in jail now. They finally got him kicked out because of some different things. Because he never would agree to a lease payment. But I think had he agreed to a lease amount, he could have stayed forever. Because the way the New York stabilization stuff and those rent control departments went for years, it fell into this really narrow opening for him to have a legal case. And this one dude spent two years in one wow. hotel room for two hundred dollars in a hotel Manhattan. where the people hate you. Oh, hate y- you. room service and people or guest services would be yeah beyond words. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So you can find you're that. making your own damn bed. Yeah, there you go. All right, we'll be back tomorrow. Rebelgrove.com. In the meantime, again, good bit of topics still to go. So I'll be a wonderful day. If you look at the eclipse, don't stare straight into the damn thing. Wear the glasses. Don't get blinded today in your uh, pursuit of Mother Nature. So appreciate that. Talk to you tomorrow.